Greetings, I'm Johnny Kicklider, a compatriot at the uh, Sons of Confed Veterans Camp, uh, Lieutenant Georgie Dixon, 1962, in Belleville, Illinois. And this is a presentation I gave last year on Stone Mountain, Construction and Controversy. Stone Mountain is a magmatic rock made out of solid granite, and it's one of three main rock types formed through the cooling of magma or lava. It's the largest chunk of exposed granite in the world. It's located just outside of Atlanta, about 20, 30 miles in Stone Mountain, Georgia. And you can see the mountain for miles. It has the highest, excuse me, the largest high relief sculpture in the world. And the carving is much larger than it appears uh, once you're staring looking at it. And I've been there twice. It's almost surreal. It's recessed 42 feet into the mountain, measures three acres, larger than the football field and Mount Rushmore. The carving is about 400 feet above ground. The deepest point is Lee's Elbow, which is right here at about 12 feet. Interesting, the workers could easily hide on the horse's ear or inside a horse's mouth to escape a sudden rainstorm. Uh, they have a model inside a museum and they're young ladies nestled up in there. Some background. In 1914, a Mrs. C. Helen Payne was a member of the United Daughters of the Confederacy, and she got the idea from a letter to the editor that an attorney wrote in the Atlanta Constitution that Stone Mountain should be used as a memorial to the Confederacy. The Venerable Brothers, who were members of the KKK and also Mrs. Mrs. Plain, and that's for full disclosure, there were owners of the mountain and rock quarries. They deeded the North Face to the mountain to the UDC in 1916. The UDC was given 12 years to complete the project and they formed the Stone Mountain Confederate Memorial Association. The original idea was a simply a 70 foot carving of Robert E. Lee, something very simple. So they got a hold of this guy by the name of Gutson Borglum. He was an Idaho born gentleman and he was hired in 1915 as the carving consultant. And interesting, he was also a member of the KKK. Oh no, by the way, the KKK did have organized events in the Stone Mountain area. Helen Plain, when she met this gentleman, refused to shake his hand because she referred to him as a Yankee. Borglum said placing a 70 foot carving would, on, the, on the huge mountain of uh, Stone Mountain would be looked like placing a poacher's stamp on a barn. So he envisioned a drawing with five groups of figures, mounted officers, Nathan Bedford Forrest, and a cavalry riding around the mountain. However, it was evolved later to, into a, a, a depiction of uh, General Lee, Jefferson Davis, and Stonewall Jackson, followed by a legion of artillery troops. Work was delayed because of the World War II, excuse me, World War I and funding. And the, uh, developed, he developed uh, a projector to project the image on the mountain so they could carve the image. In 1925, he completed Lee's head in time for Lee's birthday. But people became very unhappy with Borglum. As a matter of fact, this quote here from one of the sources, Neglect and virtual abandonment, inordinate demands for money, not do him, offensive egotism and delusions of grandeur led to his firing. And after that, he got mad and threw a fit, destroyed all his models, and they issued a warrant for his arrest. Borglum went on later to carve Mount Rushmore, which I find to be interesting given the bad reviews he got out of Atlanta. Here's a picture of Borglum's work. It's lacking the Robert E. Lee picture, but it shows the artillery and some of the cavalry here. It was unfinished, obviously, and eventually removed by the next sculptor. The Lookman era, 1925 and 1928. Henry Augustus Lookman was an American sculptor, and he started the work, restarted the work back in 1925. He decided on three figures and a memorial. He removed Borgen's work, as I stated before, and worked with pneumatic drills. It, by 1928, however, their deadline, uh, he did not complete it. He only had was Davis, Lee, and Horse Traveler, and funds were depleted, so the project ended. 
he had want to, he wanted an extension of the deadline, but the Vulnerable Brothers did not want one, and they reclaimed the property, and it was 36 years, no progress. Here was Lookman's memorial plan. You see this reflecting pool, really nice looking. A hall with 13, excuse me, there are 13 columns, and a tomb of the unknown, but that was not to be done. Lupid did develop a scaffolding system, allowed 12 men to work at one time. They did issue, the U.S. Mint did issue a commemorative half dollar to help raise money for the uh, bet. They've issued over $2 million in 1925. I actually owned one of these. It contains about a quarter inch, well, a little more than a quarter inch of silver. They sold them for a buck apiece. And her hopes were to fund the project, but sadly it did not raise enough funds, and sales were suppressed by folks who were against the project. Georgia was interested in acquiring Stone Mountain in 1941. Not sure what spurred that interest, but the st a state park authority was established to assure memorial maintenance after the purchase. However, the wars of World War II and Korea interrupted the process, and eventually Georgia purchased Stone Mountain in 1952 for a little over one million bucks. Gasoline taxes and out-of-state visitors would help pay for the project they planned. The Hancock era, 1960s. The state reorganized the Stone Mountain Confederate Memorial Association and removed the, the word term Confederate, and it simply became the Stone Mountain Memorial Association. The desire to pay homage to Confederate leaders is still important, but is now probably secondary to the economic motive. Obviously, some people in Georgia found that that area could draw visitors and generate revenue. They hosted a competition to choose a sculpture, and they chose Walker Hancock in 1963, and he was from Massachusetts. And they transformed the Confederate Memorial into a family vacation experience. Roy Faulkner developed a, uh, the thermojet torch, and he was the man who actually carved Stone Mountain. And they started restarted work back in 1964. He removed several tons of granite a day with precision. And work ceased in 1970, but finished in 1972. And here's some pictures. Here's uh, pictures of the memorial. There's a guy with a hammer and chisel breaking off granite. You can see the scaffolding here and here. There was a Stone Mountain Carving Museum that was opened in 1985 by Faulkner. It contained a thermal jet torch that he that he used. And it, but they stay, eventually the carving museum was closed and all the archives were moved uh, to Emory University and that's where they reside now. There were some postage stamps developed. The, the Postal Service issued this uh, here in 1970. And Saint, uh, over uh, 132 million were minted at six cents apiece if people remember back that far and I do sadly. St. Vincent, a private organization, uh, put out a series of postage stamps of American landmarks, and Stone Mountain was one of them. Good luck on uh, producing those today. There is controversy, obviously, surrounding Stone Mountain. After that 2015 uh, related Charleston church shooting where that man went in and shot up those, uh, those worshipers, he had a picture standing in front of the Confederate flag, and that uh, convinced people that it was all racism. The Georgia chapter of the NAACP made a proposal to remove the carving, and uh, but it would require approval by the state legislature. Stacy Abrams called for the sandblasting. Good luck with that. The thing resists 42 feet into the mountain. It had to be blown away with dynamite. This, this CEO of the Stone, Merrill, Stone Mountain Memorial Association in October of that year said they will erect a tower on the mountain with a replica of the Liberty Bell as a tribute to I Have a Dream speech. But the whole project's been mired in controversy, as you can imagine. What about Stone Mountain today? It gets about 4 million visitors a year. I've been there twice. They have a laser light show during the summer, and it is absolutely awesome. Uh, there's, there's a major park and campground there. Now, Faulkner, the, the last guy who worked on the uh, monument, he decried diminishing of the original purpose because he saw that uh, capitalism had come in and we were making money off it. He thought maybe it should be more of a memorial. And the MLK Let Freedom Ring Memorial, who knows? We don't have any idea how that's going to play out. And here's a picture of the park. If you have a chance to go there, you should. All for now, thanks for watching.